If the Pelicans want to get through the play-in tournament and make the NBA playoffs, they need to not just make adjustments from this latest loss to the Lakers, but the season as a whole. Let's make sense of how the Pelicans are in the play-in and what they need to do to win in a Monday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Monday, day after the Pelicans lose to the Los Angeles Lakers, 124-108, meaning... The New Orleans Pelicans are the seventh seed, going to play the Lakers again on Tuesday in the in-season tournament. No playoffs yet for New Orleans, and they're going to need to make some changes and kind of look at the season as a whole if they want to get in there because this was a disappointing loss. Doesn't mean the season is a failure yet necessarily, but it's definitely a disappointing loss. We're going to kind of look at this Lakers game through the whole uh, through the lens of the whole season because I think you saw a lot of lessons not learned there and the Pelicans are going to need to learn those really really quickly. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today into every day. We are here Monday through Friday the number 1 Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Live in-person show tonight in New Orleans, 7 p.m. Central at Mid-City Yacht Club with the Pels 12. Aaron Summers of the Pelicans, Will Guillory of the Athletic, and Rel Myers of the Pels 12 are going to be my guests. If you're upset, you have questions about this team, the future of Willie Green, and all of that, we're doing a live Q&A with everyone in attendance after the fact as well. So make sure you stick around. Come out to Mid-City Yacht Club. I'll see you at 7 p.m. Central. Today's episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I got a competitive side and it's a, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Monopoly Go. The mobile hit twists on classic Monopoly, so join your friends and download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play. So let's get into this one. Losing to the Los Angeles Lakers, 124-108. I want to preface everything with this, right? It was a disappointing loss. There's no getting around that. And I think it kind of sums up the Pelican season a little bit. You know, so while falling to the playing tournament is disappointing, not an entire failure of a year, and... It feels disappointing because this team didn't learn some of the lessons they need, but there was still a lot of good here, right? 49 wins, almost 50 wins, which would have only been the second time in franchise history that that has been accomplished. You know, they would have been the third seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, they're not there, so they're not, but that's how decent to competitive to good this team was this season. The West was just loaded and competitive. When you look at their tenure under Willie Green, more and Willie Green throughout the show, they've improved every single year. It doesn't mean he's a perfect coach. doesn't necessarily mean that he should be back next year, but you can't just look at this and be like, it's a dumpster fire. There's some things they need to change and improve, and they're not where we want them to be and probably not where they want to be either, but it's not like blow the whole, you know, every, every single thing up here, right? You also, if you're looking for silver linings on this, you have two home games. Two home games to get one win. Now, that could be good or bad, depending on their home record versus the road record here. Maybe it'd be better to go on the road. But two games to try and get in as either the seventh or eighth seed. And the seventh seed, and I'm probably tempting fate by telling you this, the seventh seed has never not advanced out of the play-in tournament in the three years the NBA has had the NBA's play-in tournament. So there's still a lot left to play for. Even if they lose this game on Tuesday against the Lakers, they have another game to try and win and they're going to be at home and that's a really important thing to keep in mind with this so there is a lot of positive this season we've seen zion williamson be great brandon ingram be great cj look good trey murphy or i've herb jones shoot all of those things but it hasn't been easy all season long you know and even with zion recently looking like an all nba player that's where i want to kind of start because the main guys on this team zion bi cj in this game were not good enough in a game where you just need them to be stellar right zion struggled and was basically a non-factor in this game particularly in the first half and more on that in the next segment here 12 points on 13 shot attempts did have eight rebounds 
Eight assists, that's great. Four turnovers. But Zion Williamson can't go four of 13 for under 31% shooting. You're not going to win games when that's the case, right? You know, CJ was all right. 25 points on 19 shots, but he had some real rough turnovers and his defense was bad. Ingram looked decent enough in his return, but kind of struggled within the offense and the offense kind of struggled trying to adapt and figure out how to get him back in there. You know, the boat was rocked a little bit, but I'd rather do that because this team's better with Brandon. And Ingram, and at times he kind of carried their offense a little bit with some of the mid range shots here. So, kind of, you know, to be expected with Brandon Ingram. But this game was disappointing and emblematic of the season because, look, it's the biggest game of the season. Your best players need to be their best. And this team couldn't figure out how to make all three of the stars work. When the three guys were out there on the court together, they lost their minutes. You can't have that happen, right? This is what we talked about all season long with the bench for the Pelicans beating up on opponents' benches, but their starters were kind of getting run out at times and weren't looking as good. And while, you know, the net rating for the starters and then the starters when you when you sub in Larry Nance Jr. and take out Jonas Valanciunas turned out kind of equalized a little bit. They ended up basically being a net neutral on the season, more or less a, a, a net rating of zero, let's call it. That's not good. You're going to lose to other teams that have really good starters, and the Lakers have proven to be a good team this year, right? Their record is good. The West is just really, really tough. So not having those guys going is disappointing because this has been a problem all year, and you, you, you didn't figure it out. And it feels like after 81 games, this was the 82nd game, right? You should have answers for how to make all of those stars work together. But in the biggest game of the season, for them to kind of go out and flop in the way they did, it, it's disappointing. It hurts. You know, it says a lot about the coaching staff in the front office. Why, with this amount of talent, were they not able to kind of really figure it out and kind of put it all together? And if you had done that earlier on in the year, do you not lose those two games to Memphis, right? The two games you lost it kind of blew to the Houston Rockets. Two games to the Utah Jazz, which were really disappointing, right? Losing to the San Antonio Spurs at home, even without Zion, even without Brandon Ingram. There's a lot of losses like that, that if you had kind of figured some things out earlier on, made the right tweaks, the right adjustment, understood this team a little bit more, more, the Pelicans might not be in this situation. And that's what's so disappointing about it, right? We can look back at the season and kind of point to so many different moments where they'd done just a little bit better there or had solved some of the issues that plagued them all season long that they didn't. That's where we wouldn't be disappointed or as frustrated right now after this game. You know, one of the things I said all season long was if the Pelicans reach their potential, if they figure a lot of this out, they can be a really good team. And a lot of y'all said it'll be, they will, it'll, they'll get there. It'll be a matter of when, not if. And I said, no, 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 no. It's a matter of if, not when, because this team hadn't, right? Do you feel like they're reaching their full potential right now? And I think the answer to that is obviously no. Coaching staff, front office for maybe not having some of the right kind of players. We'll look at that with the center position in the third segment here. But it leads to a disappointing moment, and it was emblematic of this. We'll look at the offense and defense against the Lakers in the next segment here. But simply put, the big three weren't good enough, Right. Brandon Ingram was a minus 28. Zion Williamson was a minus 21. CJ McCollum was a minus 11. Those guys need to win their minutes, especially if you get into the postseason and you're going to play a good team in the playoffs. It's looking like if you win this, going to be the Denver Nuggets. And you have to, have to, have to try and win the play-in tournament. You don't lose this game to try and dodge the Nuggets in the first round. That is just a dumb mistake to do. You need to win your minutes against the starters and it's going to be hard because the Pelicans haven't really figured out how to do that this season and you really saw it in this game it's why it's disappointing it's why all season long it's been a little bit of a disappointment so coming up next though where was the aggression where was the preparedness for the team not just the players not playing well but the Lakers were doing things that weren't particularly difficult we they were doing things we've seen from them before how come there wasn't really an answer to that and that's part of why this is disappointing so that's coming up here next in today's episode of locked on pelicans Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about game time because, look, buying tickets can be frustrating. So if you want to go to this Pelicans uh, play-in tournament game last minute because it's on Tuesday, the way to do it is with game time. I've, bought, I've used game time to buy 
um, floor seats to Pelicans games, last minute tickets to games that friends wanted to go to and I wanted to sit with them. I've used it to go to uh, Saints games, away Saints games as well. And we're going to even make it a little bit cheaper for you to go to this play in tournament game because game time takes the uncertainty out of buying tickets. You get to see the view from the seat. So you know, you're getting the seats that you want. And if you wait until the last minute, you can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever it is you're looking for. And then there's the game time guarantee. If you buy your tickets and then you see tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference so you know you're always getting the best deal. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets to the Pelicans play in tournament game. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code LOCKEDONNBA, L O C K E D O N N B A, for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. In today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I got to tell you all about this one here because I'm competitive. And I asked a couple of my friends if they think I'm competitive. And the answer was like, yes. So, yeah, I have a competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. And I'm sure you've probably heard of it because it's been downloaded over 150 million times. And it's a great twist on Monopoly where you play not on just one board, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations building up amazing cities that bring you big money. And the best part, messing with my friends on there. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboard shows me who's the biggest Monopoly tycoon out there. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people around the world in time in timed tournaments to hurt earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast. Please come to the live show, Mid City Yacht Club. I get to say this tonight. Tonight, Mid-City Yacht Club, we are going to be doing a live episode. I'm going to have three guests on each segment as we preview what the Pelicans need to do to win against the Los Angeles Lakers. We're going to kind of get into it with Aaron Summers of the Pelicans, Will Guillory of the Athletic, and Rel Myers of the Pels 12. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then after the show ends, we're doing thir regular 30-minute show. And then we're going to do a live Q&A with everybody there. Answer your questions about this team. You have questions about Willie Green, the front office, what they should do in the draft, all of those things. Things. We're going to have a fun time there. I'll buy you a drink if you're there. Come say hi. Come hang out. Meet some other Pelicans fans. Get ready for the NBA's play-in tournament. Okay. Let's keep talking about the Pelicans losing to the Los Angeles Lakers. Again, disappointing. 124-108. Just not being in this one at all, right? It felt like they came out and just didn't, didn't have it in a sense. And I think that was really disappointing to see because look, this was a game you obviously needed to win. This is one of the biggest games of the season, but not being aggressive like they were, especially early on. And this kind of ties into the above with the, or, you know, what I just talked about with the big three, right? Early on in this game, LeBron and Anthony Davis set the tone defensively for the Lakers. And with their length and strength, Zion kind of struggles with this. And you saw it in this game. You know, at halftime, the Lakers had a 50 to 20 12 advantage with points in the paint. The game was effectively over at that point in time. And once the defense was physical like that, this Pelicans team just kind of wilted. One of the things we've seen has been a problem for them all year long is they get punched in the face and they don't know how to respond to that whatsoever. That's on the players. That's on the coaching staff too. And after the game, Willie Green said the Lakers were the aggressor, right? Right. You know, while some of this is on the players because they need to go and take this personally and go out and try and play and play hard and have a lot of pride on the line, if you're the head coach, you also got to fire your guys up. You remember the playing tournament from a couple of years ago against the Clippers? The you got to fight speech, right? Now, not that you can always rely on something like that, but there was just nothing to kind of rouse this team, rally the troops, get them going. It was weird. They're just all listless. And just to simply come out and say, oh, well, yeah, they were more aggressive than us. We need to, you know, and then not really kind of offer anything else. 
You're the head coach. That's on you. It's on the players, too. It's kind of on everybody, right? It's on the front office. If you're not getting guys that kind of have some of that killer instinct to it who really want it, go and get those guys, right? Najee Marshall is one of those guys. Jose Alvarado is one of those guys. You know, use probably an overused phrase, right? Like, they got their that dog in them. And, you know, this team was kind of missing that here. And on the flip side, defensively for the Pelicans, to get to that points in the pain advantage, the Lakers weren't doing anything overly fancy, right? LeBron James drove into the paint, and then when they kind of overcorrected for that, he dumped the ball off to Jackson Hayes or others in the dunker spot, right there on the left or right side of the basket, or to a guy who cut baseline. And then they just went up for like an easy layup and dunk, and it happened repeatedly over and over and over again. And then once the Pelicans tried to kind of press the point of attack a little bit more, not let anyone drive into the paint in the first place, which is where they're particularly good, they... It was like, you know, I call it matador defense, right? Like you're in a bull fighting ring. There's the matador with his little like red cape and then a bull charging. And he kind of just pulls the cape away and the, and the bull goes by him and goes, oh, lay, right? That's what the Pelicans were doing. They just had some arms out and once that didn't really provide any resistance to the LeBron, you know, LeBron James and the rest of the Lakers. They just had an easy run to the rim and they scored on a dunk or a layup. Happened over and over and over in this game. And here's the thing. So one, none of this was overly complicated. And it gave the Los Angeles Lakers a 68 to 42 points in the paint advantage. Just come on, right? That's where you lose the game. By letting them do whatever they want at the rim here. When you don't have rim protection, right? And more on the center position, which is often what gives you rim protection. That's going to be up coming up in the next segment of Locked On Pelicans. So the defense just was torn apart by very easy actions. Nothing fancy, nothing that was overly complicated, just guys who kind of wanted it more and played harder than you did. But the other thing was, this was eerily reminiscent of the in-season tournament game and collapse and loss to the Pelicans before, right? The Lakers did very much the same thing in this game. They came out and played real physical with Anthony, uh, with Zion Williamson. And maybe this is just a bad matchup for Zion, just like the, the Pelicans are a bad matchup for the Sacramento Kings. Maybe this is just simply a bad matchup for New Orleans, right? Like those sorts of things just happen where a team counters you for whatever reason. It's kind of like rock, paper, scissors, right? Against this one team, you just always lose, whatever it might be. You know, maybe there's a little bit of that there, but you know, you, you've beaten the Lakers by 20. Now, they were a little bit banged up. D'Angelo Russell didn't play in that game. And when that dude makes threes against this team, it really does seem to swing things a little bit. However, they did what they did in the in-season tournament and kind of executed it again to perfection. You know, where is being prepared for that? Did you guess they wouldn't look at the film from that game and go, here's how we beat this Pelicans team, even though they played since then, right? Like, that's one of the things that I find so frustrating. This is something that we had already seen before, and that's what I think makes people pessimistic going into this game on Tuesday in the in-season tournament, is maybe there's going to be a lack of adjustments. I jokingly tweeted out, jokingly tweeted out, you know, at least the Pelicans know what not to do on Tuesday, and a lot of people basically were like, uh, no, they're just going to do the same thing. And you know what? That's not necessarily an incorrect thing because at, time, at times this team has been slow to kind of learn lessons, learn, make adjustments, right? That's why we were talking about the big three not really knowing, being figured out for what to do and what to make them most effective in game 82 of the regular season. We're going to talk about the center position in a moment. And you're seeing this team tinker and experiment and going to Cody Zeller in game 82, as if that's the answer. Like, that's what's so frustrating about this. And I think that's what makes people a little bit pessimistic going into this game on Tuesday. For the record, per FanDuel, the Pelicans are a one-point favorite, which means they would be underdogs and would not be favored. The Lakers would be favored if it was a neutral court game or if it was in Los Angeles. That's not a great position to be in. So while you're favored, yeah, but when you kind of factor in that Home court advantage has not really been a thing for New Orleans. I don't know if we're feeling particularly optimistic, and I get it. And that's why I said we're kind of looking at this game through the lens of the season. The big three not really getting things figured out and kind of who's to blame for all that. And it's kind of everybody here. But the lack of adjustments, the lack of kind of just being prepared for this team is kind of surprising. I do think I've seen some very good things from head coach Willie Green over this run, particularly on the road with the way they were defending and what they were doing with CJ McCollum to get some of these wins. But 
there's definitely something missing and something off with this team without a doubt. And that's super disappointing to me in all of this. And that's what makes this so frustrating, I think, and not at all what we have wanted to see. And it hurts, frankly. Frankly, it straight up hurts. And that's one of the reasons why they lost this game. So now you go into Tuesday, having just played this team. In theory, you know what doesn't work. I don't know if you know what works, but you know definitely what doesn't work. But are they going to make the right kind of adjustments? And I think that's an open question right now if that's the way things might go for the New Orleans Pelicans. We have seen this coaching staff, particularly against like the Phoenix Suns, come in with the right game plan. So there should be a little bit more optimism than you're probably feeling to be able to kind of make some of those adjustments, to shoot over drop coverage with C.J. McCollum, to know when to double and to how to play some of these guys so that Devin Booker didn't like light you up and what to do to get that win. There's a lot of really good things there. But this team right now, you know, I said they've been slow to learn a lot of lessons. They, they need to figure it out right now. Right now. And one of the biggest areas that they need to figure it out is the center position. Because oh, this, this one feels like a failure. Like of all the things that you want to call disappointment, yeah, I don't think this season's a failure per se. The center position, though, and everything kind of going on around that. JV, uh, Jonas Valanciunas, Larry Nance Jr., Cody Zeller, Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Let's talk about that. Let's look at that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about PrizePix because PrizePix is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. And it's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more players' stat projections and then you watch the winnings roll in. And now you can get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's Postseason. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, baseball. Today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Withdrawals are quick and there's easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types. And that's what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. So download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That's a first deposit match up to $100 when you use code LOCKEDONNBA over at Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast. We will be coming to you all week talking about the playing tournament, hopefully the actual postseason. There will be a crossover with the Los Angeles Lakers show on my YouTube channel today. We'll also have it on audio as well. That's going to come a little bit later. We've got the live show tonight at Mid City Yacht Club with Pelicans experts previewing the playing tournament game. What adjustments can they make? Do they need to make against the Los Angeles Lakers? You'll have that in tomorrow's show. We'll be also on the audio side of everything as well. If you don't watch it on YouTube, please subscribe. Aaron Summers, Will Guillory, Rel Myers are going to be my guests. Come hang out in person. We're going to do a live Q&A as well. It's going to be a lot of fun to do this with an audience. we got a great setup and everything. I can't wait to see you all there. So let's keep talking about the Lakers and the in-season tournament here. 124-108 beating the New Orleans Pelicans. Here's where I also have, you know, a, a, an issue here. And this is where I want to look at, again, this game through the lens of the whole season, right? Because I think this, this loss to the Lakers really embodies a lot of it. The big three just not really figuring some things out. The lack of adjustments, preparedness from the coaching staff to get these guys ready. The lack of just aggression. And just something lacking from this team. But also the center position. You know, this one, I think, if you want to call something a failure, that's what this is. And, you know, the lack of choosing the right guy, both from the coaching staff and the front office, has put the team in this position. So I think it's kind of a failure all around. You know, I've long said that I don't think Jonas Valanciunas isn't the answer to really what they need to do. To go right to Cody Zeller over Valanciunas is kind of mind-blowing to me. Cody Zeller has played less than 30 minutes post-All-Star break. I get that Willie Green doesn't trust Jonas Valanciunas. He doesn't do a great job defensively 
either, right? And teams have stopped doubling him. One of the things you notice, that they get him the ball in post position. They don't send two at him anymore. They did that, at, the Miami Heat did that and allowed the Pelicans to kind of beat them up and surprise them. But teams quickly learn don't do that because it opens things up for bigger threats. Teams, I think, are happy to let Jonas Valanciunas beat them, which also he's a good offensive player. Maybe, maybe let him beat them, right? But they're not doubling him like they used to do. You know, Larry Nance Jr. was very up and down this game. He had a couple of nice moments, and clearly if JV wasn't getting it going, Larry's the guy you want to rely on. But his defense in this game was bad. He was leaving guys wide open from three and just couldn't give them anything here. You know, going small with Zion at the five and Dyson out there, they're kind of using both those guys as the five. That didn't work either in this one. But the answer, and I mean this in the nicest possible way to the Zeller family, is not Cody Zeller. Right? I don't know if there's an answer on this roster, but you know what it isn't? It's not Cody Zeller. It's a massive game. And that's who you go with. Someone who hasn't played more than 30 minutes post-All-Star break. Without a doubt, those minutes should have gone to Jonas Valanciunas. This is a, it reminds you of the playing tournament game last season against the Oklahoma City Thunder, where Kyra Lewis Jr., who hadn't played in two months, was the first sub off the bench. Why are you tinkering with things now? Why are you tinkering with things in game 82 that if you win, you are safely in the postseason and you don't need to stress about the in-season tournament and you get a couple of days off? You wouldn't play for four or five days. That would have been huge for this team. Why are you experimenting with your lineup right now? You know who your best players are. Cody Zeller, if he was one of them, you would have been playing him before and you didn't. What are we doing here? Now, this is not just on the coaching staff. This is on the front office too. If this was how it was going to be, and you know it because you talked to head coach Willie Green, you're all on the same side here, you had to have traded Jonas Valanciunas. That is an absolute failure looking back on it. I said at the trade deadline, don't trade him because it makes the team worse. But if I knew it was going to go like this, tra trade him. You should have traded him. You should have made the team less talented to at least have a guy that you would have used. And again, I don't think that Jonas Valanciunas is the answer in the way that people are hoping for or want. It would have been better though than Cody Zeller. You know, the center position, as I've said repeatedly this season now, is a problem with, without an answer. And that's why I think the blame needs to go to the front office. You're just, look, Willie Green's got limitations as coach. I think we can agree with some of that here. Can grow, can change, certainly. But if you're not going to give him the things he needs to be successful, that's your job, right? Just as a coach is... You know, I think their primary job is to put their players in positions to be successful. You can't execute for them, but you can put them in the best positions to kind of maximize their skill sets. That's what you want. Same thing with the front office and a coach. You know what the coach does at this point. You know what the tendencies are. You hired the person. Play to their strengths. Give them guys that they want to use that's going to let them get the most out of it because that's not what you're seeing here with the roster. And the center position is an absolute mess. They didn't have an answer for Anthony Davis. Find one, like do something at the trade deadline. You knew that this wasn't going to always work. We've seen this be a problem repeatedly. We saw it, you know, leading up to the trade deadline to be a problem. Now we've seen it after the trade deadline is a problem. But Jonas Valanciunas maybe isn't going to be the answer, but he's going to not not be the answer. You know, it's better than a lot of the other options that you you have on this roster and you need to use that. You need to play your players, your best players and get the win here because look, no one did anything well here. You may as well go with the guy who's more talented, can at least score and do some other things. And Jonas didn't have a great game here. Now, he didn't give, really have an opportunity to do it. Just two points, you know, one of three shooting and four turnovers, three fouls. I don't think he was great. It's better than Cody Zeller minutes. That was wild to me. I get it. It's just four minutes and 21 seconds. Give that to Jonas. Put him with the starters more and stick with lineups that are working because this team goes away from that too quickly. And they did in this game. Now, would that have been enough to overcome a Lakers team kind of tearing them up in the way that they did? Maybe not. But what you did obviously clearly wasn't working, right? And that's where you need to look at that and you need to come in with a completely different game plan here when you play on Tuesday night in the Smoothie King Center. This goes back to if you're an everyday you know, here, here's another silver lining. This goes back to something that if you're an everyday, I talked about uh, a, a week or two ago. It's good that the Pelicans are struggling like this because they could have at 49 wins easily talked themselves into running it back. You can't do that now. You know you need to get a different center. You know you need to probably shake up the coaching staff in some capacity. I don't know if that means a new head coach or just new assistants, whatever. You need to really shake things up. 
and dropping to the play-in tournament, not a failure of a season, disappointing season for sure, you you now know you can't stick with the status quo, and I think that's going to be a good thing. But this team, as I said in the beginning, 49 wins is good. They've improved the last three years. The defense has been elite. We've seen some excellent play from their big three, including some of them together. There's a lot to like here. They need to just refine and tweak it and go forward. And hopefully, to get out of the play-in tournament, you can at least do some of that in the next 24 to 48 hours before you play the Los Angeles Lakers again. And look, the Lakers staying in New Orleans now, not getting on a plane, having some time to rest recoup their their energy a little bit that makes this harder it negates a little bit of the home court advantage for the pelicans here so you've got a tough task ahead of you and it's going to be on everybody to really make sure this team is ready to go we'll find out tuesday night so we'll have a crossover episode with locked on lakers coming for you to just talk about this game a little bit and then also a live in-person episode of locked on pelicans that we were going to try and live stream we're going to try and have it on youtube so you can follow along live with us all it may not work depending on the Wi-Fi situation there, but at the very least, the show will be up very soon after that show ends. And then the live Q&A after that, that's also going to be a separate show also. So I'm looking forward to all of this and having hanging out with all of y'all and getting set for the play-in tournament. It's disappointing, but the season's not over and there's a lot to play for. We're going to be covering here at Locked On Pelicans, the number one Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and I'll see y'all tonight. Mid-City Yacht Club, 7 p.m. for the live show. And tomorrow, too, if you're going to watch it that way.